morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Daily News on Breaking News on Prince Emil Entertainment TV. Today is the 27th of September 2021. Subscribe to the channel, guys. Remember to follow us on all our social media platforms Prince Emil Entertainment on Instagram, Prince Emil Entertainment on Facebook, and Prince Emil Entertainment TV on our Facebook group. We are also available on Twitter. It's a P. Miller ENT. Welcome to another edition of Everyday News, Daily News breaking news and it so a fresh diplomatic role is brewing between our president emerson nangagwa's government and the u.s embassy in harare of allegation that uh joe biden's administration was a clandestinely planning to train opposition mdc alliance polling agents to safeguard their vote in the 2023 elections on saturday presidential spokesperson joe charamba claimed on his twitter handle jamanda 2 that government had received intelligence that two unnamed high-ranking mdc alliance officials approached the u.s embassy seeking assistance in the training and equipping of 50 election agents ahead of the 2023 polls charamba described the move as an warranted interference in the country's political affairs warning the u.s government that it was skating on thin eyes but MDC Alliance leader Nelson Chamisa spokesperson Ankululelo Sbanda said there was no reason why Charamba should fret over issues of training of election agents as it was aimed at promoting free and fair elections. Charamba is speaking from a museum. Why does he think that training of election agents is political interference? There is no interference in the training of election agents, he said. He actually should be supporting it because it promotes free and fair elections. We cannot only cheat at elections, we need reforms that allow us to avoid disputed polls. In 2018, different political analysts attributed Chamisa's loss to Mnangagwa to inadequate deployment of agents to monitor the elections at remote polling stations. This is not the first time that government and NPF officials have attacked Western embassies particularly the U.S. and the British for pushing a regime change agenda. Last year, NPF acting political commissar Patrick Chinamasa threatened to declare the former U.S. ambassador to Zimbabwe, Brian Nichols, a personal non grata after accusing him of funding civic society organization to revolt against Zimbabwe. Political analyst Edward Masunungure said, by virtue of them being civil servants, government officials are obligated to abide by the formal diplomatic procedures on relating with foreign embassies. We've seen government officials doubling as ruling party spokesperson, hence the need for streamlining the communication strategies from within the government. Carelessly attacks on foreign embassies risk complication the relations of the government in other states. Information Ministry Secretary Dawaning Mangwana earlier this last week advised the U.S. Embassy to approach the Foreign Affairs Ministry, which was no bail and should be two-way. Government spokesperson know where the U.S. Embassy is and should seek to address their concerns in a diplomatic way. He said it was against the law for local political parties to receive funds from other states, but the rule of law should be applied to all individuals violating the status. The law prohibits funding of political parties from outside, including ZNPF, which has, however, received funds from several governments, China included, Masinungure said. But ZNPF acting party spokesperson Mike Bima dismissed the claims that the ruling party had received foreign funding. ZNPF is broke. That is why we are mobilizing funds from our supporters. We recently launched a program to mobilize 140 million US dollars from our supporters which translates to 14 million US dollars from each province. We run a number of programs which require funding, hence the internal mobilization. Funding political parties is not China's way of doing business. It invests in a government. That ZNPF has been funded by China are unfounded claims, he said. We know the US charge of foreign affairs and acting ambassador to Zimbabwe, Thomas Hastings, last Friday urged citizens to register to vote in the forthcoming 2023 elections. Hastings said this in a blur during a tour of Princess Margaret Health Clinic funded by the Organization for Public Health Interventions and Development. He applauded the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission ZEC for resuming voter registration following relaxation of COVID-19 lockdown restrictions. 
we applaud Zek for its effort at the voter registration process, also for beginning the census and elimination process. I believe in one of the tweets we had a quote from our Vice President Kamala Harris which said the right to vote is the right which, up, which unlocks all the rights. The upcoming delimination exercise creation of new electoral boundaries will be conducted using census data. Hastings said this is something that we feel strongly about. We feel democracy is very important and we feel that voter registration is of course a key piece to, to having good elections. That is why we are pleased to see voter registration underway here and yes we encourage Zimbabweans to take part in voter registration. He said COVID-19 was not an excuse arguing that other countries such as Zambia recently held elections during the pandemic. The constitution of Zimbabwe says there should be by elections when there are vaccines. I know under COVID-19 there have been uh, considerations for safety but many countries in the world including our own have managed to hold elections safely even during COVID-19. He said Hastings said Zimbabwe had done well in its COVID-19 vaccination exercise hence the country should be confident enough to conduct by elections so guys that's the latest here regarding uh from the u.s embassy uh you know and mdc alliance is saying um they want to train uh 50 you know uh, election uh agents yes i think we talked about it here uh, a few weeks ago and saying any political party needs funding and at the same time uh you need to pay those polling agents and uh 2018 mdc alliance didn't have uh, many uh, polling agents. I think that is why uh, some of the uh, votes were disputed because one day. And so in 2023, they need uh, to look for funding. They need to uh, look for a uh, uh, polling agents who can actually stand in in those constituencies so that they can safeguard the vote. Just like uh, what happened in Zambia, where by the opposition parties, Waka Frida and Rwanda, and so it was difficult for any rigging or any dispute just because Wangawana and Wangawa Mirira Muma areas I got one day, and this is what uh, many people have been saying after the 2018 elections. So I'm going to turn in the comment section. Uh, this is uh, daily news on breaking news on Prince Minage 7 TV. So guys remember to turn on the notification bell not to miss any of our new uploads. We upload each and every day here on the favorite channel and follow us on all our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook and also on our Facebook group which is a Prince Minage 7 TV. This is our daily news on breaking news on Prince Minage 7 TV. Thank you very much for listening and watching. Bless up. Good morning 